Uh, I was born and raised, actually, in West Sable. I was born in the house that my parents owned. Uh, what street was that? Atlantic Avenue. One of the two uh, north-south roads, West Street being the other one. Uh, I was born there. My sister was born uh, in Center Island. Uh, my father was the uh, superintendent of uh, Mrs. Dean's estate uh, and estates. And so, uh, for some reason or other, she moved uh, for in the summer over to uh, Center Island, and my sister was born over there uh, on that estate uh, and at home because the Bayville Bridge was not put in yet, and the doctor had to come around a long way. Uh, Amount to to be there for the birth, and he, he missed it. So. And just tell us who Mrs. Dean is. Okay. And then well, also where is this? Central well, that's, it's interesting because uh, everybody knows about uh, Florence Bourne from this area. Uh, Mr. Bourne was the uh, the head of Singer Sewing Machine, and and uh, lived in what is known as now the South Military Academy. Uh, and uh, his daughter Florence Bourne, B-O-U-R-N-E, uh, I believe was born there. I did not double check this. So she may have been born elsewhere, but we always believed that she was born there. But she may have been born in, in Manhattan or someplace. But at any rate, um, he uh, gave the property from what's in the Sound Military Academy to West Street in, in West Sable as a wedding present. That was which is now the, the, the golf course and, and uh, area. But that was given to her as a wedding present uh, when she got married. <clears throat> she married uh, Mr. Hard uh, first uh, and had four children, three boys and a, and a girl. Um, but we knew her as Mrs. Deans, D-E-A-N-S, uh, and it's interesting because he's not mentioned very much in, in the uh, in the histories and, and uh, biographies that, that that are available, and I don't really know why. But um, just a year prior to my birth, um, she did marry uh, Mr. Deans, and so we know her, knew her as growing up, my sister and I growing up as children, as Mrs. Deans, and we always refer to her as Mrs. Deans, and people say, oh, is that Florence Hart? And it's a, yes, but, and until I did some, some double checking, I didn't realize why, but she was newly married uh, to Mr. Deans. Um, <clears throat> my dad, as I said, was superintendent of the estate in West Sable, so we got to, to play over there. Um, from time to time, and it's interesting because uh, during uh, wartime and prior to, or, or following the wartime and all, that area, which is now the golf course, believe it or not, was a potato field. And I have pictures of me as a little child on a tractor <laughs> uh, when, the, when they were plowing up uh, the potato field. And my dad would tell stories, that, can you believe, that when they came in to spray, for insecticide, they came in with a plane. So they came in over what was Benoit's farm, low, and psh, strafed all crop the- Crop dusted. They all crop dusted the dust on me to this day. And all that <clears throat> stuff would blow, of course. <clears throat> uh, Whose who's potato field was it? it, it belonged, I, I, now, there's a good question. Now, it belonged to Mrs. Dean's. It belonged to the estate. Now, what happened to those potatoes? I mean, obviously, did, were they sold? I don't know. I mean, I really don't know. Um, she ate a lot of potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> I can relate. <laughs> she would like that. Um, my sister reminded me, which I had forgotten about, that uh, one of the things when my sister was about to be born, uh, Mrs. Deans gave my mother and father uh, a layette for a girl, and somehow or other she says, well, I know you're going to have a girl, and then you think about it years ago, why, why? But she, would, she was that type of a, of, a, of a person. And my sister reminded me also that uh, in latter years, uh, on the estate in West Sable, Mrs. Deans actually had a shop for the public of fancy 
children's clothes, which of course was not very, nobody really wanted them that fancy, but, but she would, had this knack and it, that interest of, of, uh, of, of little things for, for small people. And, and she had a shop that she actually ran herself. I said to my sister, you know, did, I don't remember that much about it. And she said, well, no, she was actually there herself. And of course it didn't, wow. didn't why? I mean, she didn't need the money, but this is something that she wanted to do for the, for the town and so forth. Um, that family was very active in the uh, West St. Oakdale uh, growth because um, the, uh, not whether it was Mr. Bourne going back to him or, or later uh, Mr. Deans and so forth, but they bought fire engines for West Sable and, and uh, were very active in, in the community and, and, and giving you know, things that were needed and so forth and so on. Oh, one of the things, she had a residence. Now, as I remember, the residence was the Sherry Netherland in New York, because my dad would say, Mrs. Deans would, would, would call up, communicate back to the estate for BB. She was never, never first names, they were always BB, the butler, his name was Walker, his name was Arthur Walker. Walker or BB, they, they, they used last names. And uh, they'd call, she'd call up my father and say, bring uh, a bouquet of flowers from the garden. And so my father would go out and they would pick the flowers in West Sable and put them in the car. And dad would say, he drove in. He said, in those days, you just drove in. To, and he said to Sherry Netherland. Now, uh, I looked up something that it said that when she married uh, Mr. Deans, that they lived in her residence at the Waldorf Astoria. Now, whether she lived in both places or not, or there was an error of location or not, I don't know. But my dad always told the story about going to Sherry Netherlands. And in those days, he would say, you could park in front. I said, well, what did you do? He said, you parked in front of the, the Sherry Netherlands and uh, told the doorman, I'll be right back. And he took, but she would call, I need flowers. So he would, they would pick the flowers and he'd drive to New York City and bring the flowers and all. Um, my parents were always interested in the, uh, the, the TV series uh, Upstairs and Downstairs because uh, the, the, uh, the downstairs people were, of course, the, the help. Uh, and when Dad, she, when she, I guess, sublet this estate over on Center Island, which is now broken up into three separate estates, but it's a big, big estate on Center Island. And, um, so we lived over there, and as I said, that's where my sister was actually born there, uh, on that estate. Uh, we lived in the gatehouse at one time. Uh, the gatehouse had an archway, which now, if you drive in that area, has been bricked over, but the, uh, the chauffeur and his family lived on one side, and we lived on the other side. Um, and uh, the butler, whose name was Arthur Walker, and he was a typical English, what you would picture as a, as a as butler. And um, he would come up and visit, now, up being that you went down towards the bay in, in, in Center Island, and that's where the, the big house, we always call it the big, you go into the big house. Uh, when, after he served the meal to the family, to, to the, the, the hard boys and, and daughter, and Mrs. Deans and whoever else was, was involved, he would come up and visit after supper, and he visit, and he <laughs> would share that, you know, very discreetly. Of course, he never allowed that he did under listen, but of course, the help always heard everything. And so the conversation tonight was about Bibi's baby, the, the the hard boys and girls who were young kids at the time. Uh, were all excited about the new baby on this thing. When my sister was born, so Bibi's baby was. With, and there was a pickup truck um, that they used on the estate, and there was a cover for it that was put on with four legs that sides rolled down, and they would put leaves and stuff in it and so forth. And when it was not needed for the cover, the cover was left up by the garage, which was our, our area where we lived. And I remember being out there one day, and Miss Shelley, we called her. Her name was Florence. She was the daughter. Uh, and she came up the hill walkway and came up and we played in this, we played house underneath this cover of the pickup truck. So here was the rich 
uh, woman, well, she, but again, she was only 10 years older than I was, so, you know, I was probably five or six, or she was, you know, 15 or 16, you know, and she came up and we, we played together and so forth. And many, many years ago, uh, when I was in Florida, um, one of my jobs down there, I worked for Borden's uh, Milk and Delivered Milk, and I had that Boca Raton, uh, Delray Beach area as my route, and I, I mean, can you, I, I can't imagine doing this, but I did it. I remember going to Mike Borden's and knocking, I find where, where she lived. She had married a doctor down there, Miss Sherry, and I remember knocking on the door and reintroducing myself and saying, you know, you know. So there was this very wealthy heiress uh, to, to the estate and so forth. So and I just, you know, and I don't remember anything other than just going and saying, hello, remember, remember me, we played outside the music. But, um, how was, how were you received? How did you I don't remember, pleasantly, ple yeah. because these were, these were, these were wealthy people who were nice people. They were pleasant, they were, they were, I don't remember any of them being, you know, nasty or, or or so forth and so on. One of the things that um, my sister and I, we always remember uh, on the estate in West Sable, for some reason or other, uh, during the war years, Mrs. Deans did not want to live in what, the big house, in, in the, the main the mansion, uh, which is now uh, Catering Hall. Uh, and what's now the, uh, the, 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 the uh, Maritime Museum exhibit building and so forth was a garage, and there was an apartment above the garage uh, with, a, with a sitting room downstairs and so forth, and that curved area that comes out uh, was, a, was a, a sun parlor of, of the sorts, and my sister and I always remember Mrs. Dean sitting there, and on Christmas we always would have to go and pay homage uh, to her. We would go, and we lived on Atlantic Avenue, so we would walk around and go over to West Avenue, and, See Mrs. Deans, and, I, and so I said to my sister, "What, what, what did we get for presents?" She said, "We probably got." I said, "Did we get candy?" She said, "I think we got like a couple dollars or something like that." But we always would have, would have to go and, and visit her and so forth. Um, Was it like large groups of kids, or just the people who worked for them? Like, it was just you know, it was just I, as I remember, it was just my mother, father, and my sister and I were supposed to go there okay, you know, so on school. Christmas Day. Yeah. yeah. Just, you know, go over and wish, they, her, wish her Merry Christmas. You know. And did they feed you a little? No, time? I don't remember that okay. at all, no. But one of the... the potatoes? <laughs> yeah, potatoes. <laughs> <Sack> potatoes. <laughs> the, uh, it, was, was it, it was fun but growing up um, in, in uh, going back over to, to, to Center Island because when, when the family was away, which would be summertime, they'd go to Florida. I mean, sorry, wintertime, they'd go to Florida. So we would get to go and play in the big house. And uh, at one time, and why I don't know, we moved from the gatehouse to what was the laundry. And the laundry was closer to the, the mansion, the estate, the, the big house. And uh, I remember going to the big house one winter time to visit dad and the other workmen who were working in the basement of the, of the mansion. And there was a dumbwaiter. Uh, that was operated by ropes, and so my father and I would get on this little cage, and he would take me up, and it was the dumbwaiter only for firewood to bring to the fireplaces on each floor of the mansion, and I remember going up and opening the door and looking in the mansion room. When we lived in the, uh, in the laundry, as strange as it sounds, but true, we rode our bikes. The laundry was a laundry for the whole state, so it was not only the, the family, but it was also the help used this laundry, which was like a professional laundry with all kinds of machinery and dryers and whatever. We would ride our bicycles, our three-wheel bicycles around, and the laundry was so big that we, we would play in there in the wintertime. And, believe it or not, we played inside the dryer. Now, could you picture this? The dryer was so big that the little kids could get into this great big dome and we were playing and so you know we were doing yeah. things like that. Um, it's fun. But it was fun. <laughs> it was fun to grow up. Uh, and when the family was away, everybody was I, I don't remember intruding into the big house. I remember seeing some of the rooms again front right but I was a little kid at the time and all. But 
Um, but it, it was interesting because the, the uh, one of the things that my father talked about for, for some reason or other, uh, again, it was wealthy society uh, and, and people who knew each other. When, when uh, Franklin Roosevelt was governor of New York State, uh, Mrs. Roosevelt, Eleanor Roosevelt, came out by the Long Island Railroad to uh, uh, Oyster Bay uh, to visit Mrs. Deans. And they, she came out for the day and visited. I remember my father was asked, BB, would you take Mrs. Roosevelt back to the, to the train? And my father did, and I always asked him, I said, what did you talk about with Mrs. Roosevelt? He said he didn't, he didn't really remember, but, um, but it was fun growing up on a, on a state like that. And, and uh, uh, Mrs. Deans, um, what, what, it, it, there's a lot of pictures around of her wheeling the children and so forth and so on. Uh, in that attic of, the, uh, of what's now the, the Maritime Museum, there were great things up there. I remember there were sleds. There was a sled, believe it or not, that was it would hold maybe four people with a propeller on the back, with an airplane propeller, oh. for uh, riding on the bay on the ice. Uh, and there was also a portable little car uh, that was a gas-operated car, and we also that was really fantastic. Years and years later, uh, Bud from Wine. Uh, from West Sable became friendly with, I believe it was Billy Hart, uh, one of the, the, the sons of, of Mrs. Deans. And uh, he ended up getting that. I always remember that they used to sit in front of the gas station, that, that little car that I remember. So for some reason, uh, Billy had, had given it to, to, um, uh, to Butter and Wine. Billy was, interesting, uh, was interested in, in uh, aviation, and I believe he, he was in the service and I guess flew and so forth, but he became a commercial pilot. Uh, so he was a rich uh, heir to this whole born estate, uh, monopoly, money, wealth, and so forth. He, he, he became a commercial pilot. Um, what about the other brothers? Did I don't know. I, didn't, I don't remember any of them. Uh, Miss Sherry one time came in uh, I was, one of my first jobs was in a uh, grocery store in West Sable, which believe it or not was one of the, the forerunners of IGA, because I remember working there as a, a kid in high school, and there was a big meeting going to be in, uh, on Long Island, that they were going to form an association for Independent Grocers Association, IGA, which is, and that was the beginning, I remember the night they had the meeting, because they were going to go to that meeting hall. And I remember Miss Sherry coming in one time to, to the store to buy something. I mean, but that, I don't remember what she looked like. I knew she was very pretty, I remember that, but I don't remember um, really much about, about them at all. Uh, Mrs. Deans eventually uh, married another gentleman whose name was Thayer. Uh, and I noticed online, uh, just looking up some of the, the, the dates and all about uh, the family, that there was a, a, an update, believe it or not, just two or three months ago, uh, from so and so Thayer, th th the third. So it was a great grandson, and so forth and so on. So the, the, it's, uh, it's interesting to see that there's still family around. Of course, there would be. But